Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Progressive Overload Podcast. Have you ever thought about strengthening multiple areas of your life at the same time? Then you've come to the right place. Our goal is to help you identify ways that you might need a progressive overload to break through those plateaus and keep you growing. Welcome to the Progressive Overload Podcast. Um, I'm one of your hosts, Adam Lazarine. I'm here with Joe Copeland. What's up, guys? And Tyson Burwell. Right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, look at that. Tell wow. Me. Muscles and all. Uh, you want to be on YouTube. Make sure you see that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he almost, took his shirt off. Almost ripped a sleeve on that one. Well, the seams are, are stretched. They're, yeah. uh, they're putting, in, putting in the work. That's holding right. them in. So That's right. not much give on these uh on these scrub on the tops scrubs? here. Yeah. Do they make scrub tops for like for, athletic for people? Athletic no, people? I'm lucky to find one that are just for men. Really? Yeah. yeah. This is true. Yeah, you go to the, any uniform store and the whole store is just female women. scrubs and then there's like half a corner. There's just right. this little closet. Right. And you're like, yeah, I think there's some guy stuff in there. That could just be a microcosm of men and women in general in their homes. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably so. Probably so. Actually very true. Yeah. Very true. All right. Well, uh, nonetheless, we welcome you to the Progressive Overload Podcast today. We're excited that you are joining us, however you are joining us, and I'm looking forward to bringing you today's episode. Uh, We are right up against Thanksgiving, you guys. It's here. Uh, Man. And uh, with that, uh, I I began to think about the one thing that uh, dominates the Thanksgiving conversation, and that would be what? Food. Food. Food, Yes. Mm. Um, And so... I want to begin by just telling you a guilty pleasure of mine at okay. Thanksgiving. So favorite favorite holiday foods? Probably favorite, one of my favorite things food? to eat at Thanksgiving is chocolate pie because it's homemade. Okay. Mm. The chocolate is homemade mm. and it is Who good. makes it? Brandy makes Brandy. it. It's yeah. delicious. Mm. And um, I look forward to sharing that with you. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, he just assumes you're going to bring him some. I'm figuring No, I'm just going to show up on Thanksgiving Day. <laughs> there you go. Just show up. But yeah, I'm... Uh, I'm grateful that we have that at my house um, because I like it so much. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, Chocolate pie. What's what about your... What about you guys? So if we're th- if we're going dessert route, mm. my favorite all, all is always the like buttermilk pie. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm. So okay. Good. So good. Uh, but like entree wise, I mean, golly, it's, it's hard to beat good dressing. Yeah. I like a good dressing. Yeah. That's so, good. So for me, desserts is there. There's not really a wrong answer here. No. All of the desserts are so good at, at our house. Um, I gotta say though, probably my favorite dessert is uh, in our family. We, call, we make a stuff called pink stuff, yeah. which is okay. sounds gross, but hear me out. It's cottage cheese. I'm out. No, hang on now. <laughs> hang on now. It's cottage cheese <laughs> with uh, whipped cream and then Jello. Like yeah. the Jello packets, and sometimes they'll add like add fruit and stuff, but you don't even taste the the uh, cottage cheese. That's, that's just, your favorite. It's delicious. So oddly that's enough, all I, the desserts out there. That's no, your favorite. Dude, I'm telling you, bro. Oddly enough, if you come to church on a day that we have a meal, mm-hmm. you're oh, gonna yeah. get some of you're that. You're gonna get almost that. every so meal. Good. Somebody's gonna bring that. So good. No, I, I think I've had something similar to that, and it's good. But and I it's mean, high in protein. It's all cottage cheese. Oh, we're not talking about that yet. But that's the weird. That's the weird thing about me is I actually enjoy healthy food primarily. Oh, I know. No, but I'm sitting here thinking of like my cheesecakes. I know yeah, I went. Man. We went from chocolate pie to something that to was good for cheese. you, almost that's good for you. My honest answer, though, I that's know. the thing. That's a good answer. All hell. Yeah, if I was giving you a, I don't know, a different answer, uh, pecan pie. I yeah, love pecan pie. Okay, I love pumpkin that. pie, and I will with eat that ice too. cream. I like ice cream with my pink stuff. That's the thing. What? I'm telling you, it's Cottage so good. Cottage cheese and ice cream? Yeah, oh. man. It's so delicious. Hope you don't have a dairy intolerance. I'm out. <laughs> dude, I, I can drink a gallon of milk. No yeah, problem. Same, here. dude. If I ever like get some sort of intolerance or insensitivity to milk or dairy... I will cry. Yeah. Yeah, you'll have to give up ranch. Body by cheese and ranch, yeah. <laughs> that would be terrible. Yeah, the, uh, uh, that would be awful. Your foods in your pantry would be crying. It would, would go, yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. How much ranch do y'all go through at your household? Okay, see, we talk about this like it's ridiculous. It is ridiculous. But no, one bottle of ranch will last us a good two weeks. A couple hours. <laughs> two weeks? <laughs> Gosh. I'm pretty sure mine lasts a couple of months. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We sh- I should just start going to Sam's and get like the one by g- the gallon. The gallon jug. Yeah. Just mm-hmm. have to get it out with a ladle. I will say nothing's better than homemade ranch, though. That's so true. It, it, mm. Yeah. Anyway. Homemade yeah. ranch. Okay. So Thanksgiving is uh, right around the corner. That's right. Um, and then you guys, are y'all... Um, are y'all big into the meal? Are you big into the football? Are you big into working out right. on that day? I mean, what is the the norm for you guys? Yeah, we're we're always it's 
well, of course, the meal is is the center point of the evening, as it should be, kind of maybe. Should be. Um, I don't know. We'll talk about that too. But uh, Texas A and M Aggies, we're we're Ugh. we're a And M, we're an A and M family, and they always play on Thanksgiving Day. Usually, is on that, that still Thursday. a thing now that they're in the SEC? Mm-hmm. Okay. Usually, they're they're almost always playing somebody. I didn't um, realize that. And so that's that's our thing. And I if not that, we'll watch there. the Cowboys. I had to put it out there. Joe likes to pretend that he went to A and M. Oh no, you're going to go down this route. Yeah, yeah. He likes to pretend he went to A and M. I did not know this about yeah, him. He'll he'll tell people, "Go Aggies! I'm an Aggie!" Blah 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 blah. And then you find out he never went to A and M. I at all. bleed maroon, but not on paper. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> he he has a fake ring he wears. I was going to say, it if is you don't not have a fake the, ring. if you don't have the ring, <laughs> you don't. All matter. right, I'm sweating now. Yeah, like, <laughs> it's uncomfortable. And I, in here. And I say that because I have some dear. <laughs> A and M friends that I love, oh, you know, man, and they're, they're fantastic. Oh, yeah. But man, if you don't have the ring, mm-hmm. it, that, so that's true. like the introduction. You know, my name is so and so, class of whatever, and yeah. then that is the introduction right. for A right. and M people. It's so true. Their identity. Yeah, and yeah. Um, and so. No, I'm the first person in like four generations in almost my entire family that did not go to A and M. I'm talking aunts, uncles, cousins, um, brother, mm-hmm. sister, mom, dad, like all. But I, oh, my. My dream was always play baseball in, in college, and so I chose that route instead. There you go. That's good. Cool. Yeah. And just and pretend. of course, wasn't good enough to play at A and M, so I had to go to a Division three school. Right. And then he can just tell everybody he went to A and M. No one else will know. But yeah, nobody checks diplomas. That's true. That's and my uh, I graduated from Hardin Simmons, and my college ring from Hardin Simmons actually looks pretty dang close to an Aggie ring. So <laughs> people always ask, "Hey, is that an Aggie ring?" Oh, and I'll have to just. Hang my head. He will no. lie right to no, the face. No, I've never say, lied. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's like exactly lying. What that's it is. like telling somebody you were in the military and you weren't actually. That's oh, a sin. That's the, yeah, I wouldn't that's do terrible. that. Stolen valor. Yeah. What about you? What's what's the what's the thing for you? Uh, the the meal is a big deal, mm. and then football is usually the afternoon. You know, right. we'll sit down and watch it. Yeah. And um, probably be disappointed uh, whenever the Cowboys lose. Right. Exactly. Um, it's been that way for several years, anyway. Or. It's a touch and go. So anyway, it's it's a nice day. I like <laughs> Thanksgiving. We enjoy uh, hanging out together. And so, um, how do we do Thanksgiving in a way that uh, validates all that we talk about on this podcast? <laughs> I mean, because That's a good way to put that there question. is a yeah. there's a lot that you can get into uh, when mm-hmm. it comes to food um, mm-hmm. and even a, the day itself, right. the lifestyle of the day itself. Right. So how can we how can we help our listeners today and each other because right. you know this is kind of a deal that we have to we have to walk through as well. So what would you say uh, yeah. as we start looking at holiday uh, in general? Right. So I mean I think it's no it's no lie that people tend to gain weight during the holiday season. Mm-hmm. So I mean starting at like Halloween forward, people tend to like what happens in the holidays stays in the holiday like the vegas right like it's it's uh it doesn't count but uh i saw this thing it's like uh hey you keep blaming your uh weight gain on the holidays but uh you were fat in july you were fat, yeah <laughs> i know that's jacked up but i wow. laughed so hard at that <laughs> but anyways um, so i think just uh if i mean we are trying to live a healthy lifestyle we're trying to help others live a healthy healthy lifestyle trying to combat the disease and dysfunction that's out there. And so if we can go about approaching these holidays in a way that at least can combat and maintain some of the holiday weight gain that comes Mm -hmm. and not let it get you out of your routine and not uh, just completely screw up everything that we've done the previous or the rest of the year previous to the holidays. Cause I mean, yeah, you don't want to work hard from January to September and then just blow it all in three months, you know. Here's so. a quick fix: just just call it your bulking phase. It's a bulking it's phase. A bulking <laughs> phase. I'm just. It's part of. I it. mean, dirty bulk all the that. way. People do that yeah. for sure. It's, yeah. Dirty bulking. <laughs> I went through that. I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, still in it, maybe. I don't know. Right. Well, I mean, we. You know, if you've followed us through this podcast, we did a health challenge at the beginning of the year, and we have all, we all lost. You know somewhere between 25 to 40 pounds depending on who it was and and it was my goal to okay next year when the health challenge comes back up I don't, I don't want to be back to where you back, were I don't want to well I don't want to be much more than where I left off yeah right. and I'm and I've set within about five pounds of that final number the whole time I was wondering what that noise was yeah it's um, you <laughs> I put it on do not disturb so why is it doing that 
Anyways, <clears throat> so let's talk about eight healthy holiday hacks and um, help you guys how or see if we can help you to approach Thanksgiving, Christmas, mm-hmm. um, in just a better way that's not going to screw up everything everything that you've put towards your health. Yeah, let's yeah. go. Let's okay. do it. Cool. So, um, what is what would you say as you're looking going down the food um, spread? Because that's what most people do. They mm-hmm. put it all out there, and everybody goes and fixes a plate. Am, am I wrong in that? Is nah, that how you do that? Yeah. Okay, buffet style. So, how as you're going through the the buffet or the spread, what would you tell people to look for? to put on their plate right so you got to prioritize protein mm-hmm. um one we know it's the most satiating food of, of all the macronutrients and so and obviously it's going to most likely be the healthiest option there um and so it's good for gains yeah that's right we're trying to build muscle we need our protein Shit. and most of the proteins at thanksgiving and christmas are delicious protein it's mm-hmm. not like you're having to choke it down right yeah. you know it it's going to be good so start off with a healthy portion of protein if if you if you want to be really serious about it, get a plate, put nothing but your protein on it, go sit down and eat it, and then once you give yourself some time to eat that, then you can go get some other options if you're still hungry or you're just less likely to overeat on the mac and cheese and the mashed potatoes and stuff like that if you've already filled yourself with the protein. Yeah, that's a that's a good way to do it. And you could also do it the other way where you start out with a good salad. Just, yeah, for just sure. Load up on 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 good greens and that kind of thing. Absolutely. Um, and you know, and then go get your rest of your meal and stuff. Don't pass up the rolls, you know, like don't don't starve yourself. <laughs> of cause, course. Cuz you are there to celebrate, but Absolutely. at the same time, yeah, you try to stay disciplined cuz you don't want to get too off track where you're going to regret it tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Right. So what would um that kind of points us in the right direction because you might go to a family gathering or something and you're like, there is no salad. <laughs> yeah, right. Nobody has a salad. So yes. uh, if you know that's coming, then one of the things you might want to try to do is bring your own. Yes, or bring, exactly. And make sure you yeah. bring enough to share. Of mm-hmm. course. Yeah. Um, We're not be, bringing your own Tupperware of your own personal healthy right. dish. but Bring your own pink stuff, like Tyson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <okay. laughs> <laughs> Kelly makes yeah. the best pink stuff. Okay. Uh, that's what we're bringing. Okay. Right. Well, uh, yeah. Yeah, just... Uh, Bring your own salad. Bring your own vegetable dish if if you want. If you know your family may not li- have the same health goals that you do, come prepared with that. Mm. And and you you can eat more than just that salad, but it's going to help you with digestion to make sure you're getting enough fiber in your in your meal. Um, there's a lot of stuff that a lot of the ways that that can help you. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things to do, you know, <clears throat> so imagine you you eat your Thanksgiving meal. You probably overate. You feel miserable. What does everybody want to go do after that? Take a nap. Go nap. take a nap. Lay down. Sit down. They're just exhausted. But that is terrible for our digestion. And it's it's. Ter- I mean, it just lets that food just sit there, and and it's heavy. One of the best things you can do after eating a Thanksgiving meal is just go on a family walk. Have you all ever done that before? Not or after a meal period? Not necessarily a walk. You know, there was a couple times where we would actually, uh, we would play games, though. We'd go out and right. play horseshoes. We would go, uh, we actually did baseball one year, which was super fun. Yeah, that sounded like a good time. That was like a little softball. Heck yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Baseball, yeah. football, horseshoes. Right. Um, cornhole. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any kind of right. activity that's going to get you upright and moving. That's right. Uh, is going to be beneficial to helping um, offset what you've just, I wish I should say it that way help digest what you've just eaten exactly. and mm-hmm. then try to keep you on track because you know what's coming. Our bodies are just machines. And so you realize what's coming in a few hours is dinner. <laughs> you know, if you have yeah. Thanksgiving at lunch, uh, right. if you have that big meal at lunch, then you may not want to eat, but right. there a lot of people do. You just turn around mm-hmm. and do it all over again. <laughs> and just that's heat a, up the same plate. Yeah. I mean, really that's a, it's kind of a big deal. Um, making you a bigger deal, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, anyway, no, Any, go no ahead. sorry. I was just going to say, uh, I've explained a little bit of this science before on the podcast of of astronauts when they're in space with no gravity, they have a really hard time digesting foods the same mm-hmm. way that we do on land. And that's literally because of gravity. So when we're laying flat and our stomach's flat, we're not vertical. We have a much harder time digesting the food in our stomach than if we're upright and walking. And yeah. so that's why going for a walk post meal is, is a great idea. But it, the... The activity doesn't even have to be after the meal. Do something. I mean, just if we can't, if we don't want to control 
one side of the energy balance equation that is calories in, maybe we can control the calories out equation a little bit more, you know? So Mm -hmm. think about that. Okay. That's a good way to, a good thing to think about. Um, all right. Um, this one is interesting to me. Yeah. This note that you have, it says, uh, fast before or after meal to offset surplus. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of my tradition. Uh-huh. I actually, I don't eat until, until the, the Thanksgiving dinner, which, yeah. you know, we, we typically eat around like one thirty or two o'clock. Right. So, you know, it's just a fast in the morning and by that time you think you're starving, like I'm going to eat this whole thing. And then you realize that your stomach shrank too. And it's like, you can, you, right. know, you can only eat what plate and you're yeah. good. Yeah, people don't realize when whenever you're in a fasted state for a certain amount of time, your appetite actually is suppressed. It's not mm-hmm. sitting there just increasing and increasing. You're, I don't know if your science, I mean, if your stomach literally shrinks, but it definitely feels like it won't be able to hold as much food as if you had eaten previously. It might be antidotal, but that's definitely the case for yeah, me. Yeah, you know, if, I feel that. If I go on a fast, I definitely can't eat as much as I think I can. Right. And and if you've listened to our fasting episode, you'll pr- you're probably like, wait, Joe, you said not to do this in in that episode. <clears throat> I think it's important to know where our mindset is when this. I'm not fasting so that I can stuff myself afterwards. I'm not fasting solely because I want to just pig out. I'm fasting because for two things. One, I'm not going to be sitting there grazing the entire time because I don't know if you guys do this, yeah. but. Once we get there to where my family's house, there's food out and ready to be consumed. Yeah, like, you have uh, a appetizers, and appetizers and all and kinds stuff of stuff. Like that. I am horrible about that. Even right now, like uh-huh. I'll go home today and have to fight the uh, the concept of grazing in my own right. home, just right. snacking. Yes, yeah. and it kill it it kills me sometimes. Yeah, because not that's a really bad way to put that. I'm still alive, <laughs> um, <laughs> but you know what I'm saying. It it. It's difficult yeah, uh, right. when I go home and the kids want a snack and they want something, you know, right. they've been at school and they're, you know, they've had lunch at 11, 15, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, now it's four o'clock in the yeah. afternoon uh-huh. and they want a snack. Right. One, one thing Kelly started doing, um, and this helped us a whole lot, she actually started making these little jars of, of healthy snacks. So often whenever you want a snack, you're always just like, oh, what's available? There's a package of peanut butter crackers there's a you know right. there's always simple carbs to eat but mm-hmm. there's never it there's so what she's trying to do is, is she's trying to actually make it a pre-packaged almost like celery and peanut butter like apples that. and peanut butter um you know all these other little little things too carrots and that's that's really a, helped me with my snacking yeah that's cool. good i get home yeah. from work and it's like instead of grabbing a package of little debbies or whatever just go over there and screw it get some uh get some carrots some ranch yeah you yeah. and then go you're on your way Cool. Sweet. I'm gonna be sponsored by Ranch one day. I swear. Hidden Valley. <laughs> yeah. We're after it. Yeah. All right. Are so you a craft man or a Hidden Valley? Oh, Hidden Valley all the way. Yeah. yeah. I right. won't go for that. I crap. just have to point this out. Uh, somebody brought salad to our life group last night and brought craft ranch dressing. Yeah. And I was like, That's a sin, right? That's in the Bible. Uh, it's, well, it's, yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it may be somewhere, somewhere it's, not the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the same, maybe that Valley that, you know, Goliath was standing across <laughs> as he <laughs> shouted at the Philistines. Um, oh, that was the craft Valley. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's about as close as I can get, but yeah, I loved it. Um, so another, so, uh, another reason that I, I like to fast before, um, a meal like that is because. Someone who me who is who has struggled with an unhealthy relationship with food. I've struggled with binge eating. I've struggled with, you know, just con- letting food consume my brain. Is it's helping me disconnect from that. So instead of showing up to my parents' house for Thanksgiving Day just thinking about food, 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 I'm gonna I'm gonna st- restrict myself a little bit from eating all this the the grazing type foods, and instead I'm gonna put that focus on spending time with my family spending because that's what they're what's that's that's what we're there for what spending if, time with them what if you don't like your family you <laughs> well that's a whole nother t- uh, topic it's okay. <laughs> <That's> another episode <laughs> that's the after after <laughs> hours episode we'll after talk about fam- <laughs> i'm kidding i love my family uh, yeah no, i'm just joking yeah don't they listen <laughs> <laughs> yeah right we're actually hosting this year oh and right. that, that'll be our first oh, time cool. doing that yeah, yeah i'm not looking forward to the new to house it. I know. yeah yeah the, the fam family are coming and uh we're gonna have to I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking we're making a banner, and it just says, "Please leave by nine. Yes, <laughs> and nine. That's late. Eight. Let's yeah. go seven or eight. I don't know. Yeah, nine at the very latest. Though. After the football <laughs> game gets out of hand, you can leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
yeah anyways just d- disconnecting yourself from from that that stress in your head about food yeah anyways. so you're gonna slow down and and enjoy your family uh one of the things that i was i'm glad that you put on our our topics today was to slow down and actually chew your food yes mm-hmm. <laughs> um i was watching my dog eat the other day when you know just briefly I don't yeah. just stare at my dog while he eats. <laughs> right. uh, what's your favorite pastime? No, that's not that's it. Not it. <laughs> um, but I, the dog like inhaled some food and then choked and uh-huh. coughed it back out. And I was like, yep. chewing helps, yeah. you know, and that's yeah. what I actually said to the dog. Like it would understand me. Right. Um, uh, but that might be something that we could say to our listeners. Chewing helps. Chewing helps. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, because you, there's science behind this mm-hmm. actually you know the more times that you um masticate a, a piece mm-hmm. of food mm-hmm. can i say that you can um the um the better it is for your brain you know, like your right. brain realizes that you're being satiated and right. um then you feel fuller these are big words i but know yeah, i know uh, I'm I'm well it's it's the uh i i remember the first like episode or two we talked about leptin and ghrelin Whenever we're chewing fast, we're not giving our body to, uh, enough time to respond and release the leptin, which is the feeling the which is released when we're full. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and then ghrelin is the the hormone that's released whenever we're hungry. Uh, and so, if we stuff it all with that within minutes, we're not giving our body to tell us, "Hey, I'm full. You need to stop eating." Yeah, that's one thing I have to be on myself about. Like as far as like getting a plate. Eat, eat your plate and sit for a little while yeah. before you go get seconds or the dessert or right. whatever else. I'm feeling that right now because I wolfed down lunch right before this and I'm just like miserable mm-hmm. because I only had like 10 minutes and yeah. I ate too much. Shit. And I'm sitting you brought here it with sweating. you eating on the air. But, you know, I think they would really enjoy that. Yeah. You know, <laughs> as I sit there and chew. <laughs> Welcome to ASMR Progressive Overload Podcast. ASMR. Listen to us eat. Listen to one of us eat. <laughs> <laughs> you guys will just leave. Yeah, we're just gonna let you have a individual uh, show today. <laughs> um, so slow down, spend time with the family, and that will lend itself to slowing down while you're eating. Right. Um, actually, have a conversation. Um, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's right. uh, in- that's important. Uh, yeah. Maybe maybe you are getting to spend time with your family. Maybe you are not. But whoever is at the table with you, make sure and. Um, spend some time talking to them. Right, yeah. right. Um, so knee to knee, face to face conversation is a lost art. Mm-hmm. It is uh, mm-hmm. because m- so much of what we do now is predicated on having our face in our phone yep. and our thumbs tied to the keyboard on our phone. Mm-hmm. Right, right. That's um, right. And so remember to slow down and have a knee to knee, face to face conversation. And put away your dang cell phones. Put away the phone. There yeah. you go. I hate that so much. Like. <clears throat> My family and I, we all, all of brothers, sisters, aunts, you know, all of the, the whole family, we don't get together very often, like four times a year, maybe. And I hate whenever we finally get to have that family get together and we're sitting in the living room and I look around and everybody's sitting there on our cell phones. Yep. Kids are off playing by themselves and then we're just sitting there on our cell phones. And I hate it so much, even though I'm right there on my cell phone too, you know, it's just cherish your time, man. Yeah. Cherish the time that you get to spend together. Cause one day. You're going to say, man, I miss, I miss being able to do that with my parents or I miss, you know, so just don't take advantage of this time. Yeah. One of the people that I know, uh, he was actually doing it to be kind of funny and spoofy, but he had his, uh, family in for a holiday and, uh, he said, good family time. And they took a picture and it was, it was staged clearly, but oh, gotcha. everybody had their phones. Yeah. Some, some of the little kids had the tablet, somebody yeah. had an iPad and right. an iMac and, in a MacBook, you know, they mm-hmm. had it all right. open and up, and that was their picture of family time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, it was kind of meant to be funny, but it's really the truth of the Yeah, minute. it is. And 100% it's true. It's sad, but it's yeah. true. Um, okay, so how do you guys deal with leftovers? Because uh, I actually, whenever I can remember being a teenager, and we would go have Sunday uh, lunch every sun, almost every Sunday at my grandparents' house. Mm. And then we would sit and watch the football game or whatever, um, or they had a lot of land. We'd go out and play and do nice. ride four wheelers, whatever. And so I remember us finishing that meal just on a regular Sunday. My grandmother just taking a sheet out of the closet, covering it up. That's sanitary, isn't it? Yeah, Super yeah. sanitary, <laughs> definitely. And then 
in the afternoon, late afternoon or early in the evening, we'd come back for dinner, pull the sheet off and just keep and eating. Eat again. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I'm like, I, I can't imagine doing that at this point in my life, but <laughs> you made it out fine. That's why our immune system's so good. I know yeah, that's, that's true. That probably explains a lot about me. <laughs> um, no, how do we handle leftovers? Um, I'm going to disagree with you. You said to, to feel to to give leftovers to someone else. Yeah, I love taking home as much of the turkey, the brisket. Well, I was gonna say that too. And yeah. all these, all the all the things that I I'm know. I'm gonna take as much protein home as I can. Exactly. Yeah. And I'll meal prep for it. You know. Absolutely. Which, to your point, you're talking about traditions. I hated the week after Thanksgiving growing up because we would eat all you <laughs> nothing but turkey and stuffing for the next week. Yeah. You know, it was awful. And then you're geared up to do it again at Christmas. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Same food. Here we go again. Right. But no, no. I I think uh, I think taking home the turkey, taking home the brisket or whatever pro- the ham, whatever proteins you got, yeah. and then some veggies. Man, you can make some awesome meal prepping. Yeah. With agreed that. with that. Agreed there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe but, you need a turkey and ranch sandwich. I don't know. I'll take it. Does that work? But uh, uh, most of the time, it's uh, it's the mac and cheese and the mashed potatoes and the dressing and stuff that that we have so much left over and so it's always divvied up and taken home you know yeah but yeah. if you struggle with that why would you want to i mean if you struggle with uh leaning towards processed carbs too much too often why would you sit there and take a five gallon bag home with you that's true that's it's true. like popcorn i guess at the movie theater <laughs> <laughs> i need a big tub of it <laughs> just a big, just mac to, and cheese yeah just to put it in my lap and what you know eat while i'm watching yeah, right um, that goes against everything we're teaching on this right. podcast, doesn't <laughs> yeah. it? I think so. Okay, good. Um, all right. Um, I, I have to deal with this probably more often than you guys do. Um, say no to, you just say, said say no to Aunt Edna. Does <laughs> yeah. that mean that she's brought something that you don't like to eat or that you do like to eat? Or so just to my, make her feel better, you're no. going to eat? <laughs> my my thought process behind this point, just feel free to say to no, feel free to say no, is when um this isn't my scenario. I don't I haven't been in this, but I've I've seen it before and I've heard people talk about it, where they go to a family function where their family doesn't live a healthy lifestyle, but they know we do. Mm-hmm. And they made this, you know, deep fried corn on the cob, whatever, <laughs> I don't know, something just with ranch on it. Yeah, something just <laughs> super <laughs> duper unhealthy. And you decide to pass on it. You're like, no, I don't need that. And they're like, no, you have to try this. Yeah. Please try this right now. You have to try this. This is like, an old family recipe. You yeah, need exactly. To, you need like this in your life. Like, yeah. if, you, if you don't feel like you need to try it, it's you're allowed to say no. Yeah. <laughs> you don't yeah. have to put it in your That's body true. if you don't want to. That's true. Yeah. And <laughs> and I think when, when people that, they're probably trying to pressure you into that out of jealousy a lot of times mm-hmm. because they're not taking care of their health, so they're wanting they're wanting you to try it so they feel better about themselves you know? so do you get that i mean I, i've uh people have almost like belittled me because i eat healthy they're, <laughs> oh yeah they're like i Shaming. know you i know you probably won't eat this but <laughs> exactly. would you please try this right. because you know it's just like right. what is what's the attitude for yeah. <laughs> you no know? i usually get the opposite of that if i'm like if i'm like at a restaurant here in town yeah and i got maybe i got like a chicken sandwich with sweet potato fries somebody will come and look at my plate they're like oh you're eating some fried food huh yeah. Oh, and yeah, just yeah, like, yeah. oh, you're breaking your, your yeah. law? Yeah. 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 And I'm like, too. what did you eat, Karen? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Go shove your double XL. Never mind. <laughs> I was going to say booty into your car and leave. Well, but, thoughts yeah. was what I was thinking. Shot, <laughs> yeah, your double XL thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was a safer answer, wasn't that it? That was, yeah. Uh, I think so. I was trying to save you, but I couldn't get there fast <laughs> you enough. Didn't. Um. So I'm thinking about how I have to deal with this because, like, Sunday we're going to have a, a meal at the church. Mm-hmm. Oh, y'all do? Yeah. And cool. so we're going to do that after the service. And I will go through. Uh, typically, I'm one of the last ones to go through the line, which is fine. Right. Um, Sounds like you're complaining. No. <laughs> <laughs> I do that on purpose. I'm kidding. <laughs> and, uh, and then I, I see all of the things that people have brought to, uh, to feed us. And it's a potluck meal. And it's, mm-hmm. you know, there's all kinds of good stuff that people have brought and cooked and prepared. And so I kind of get this thought in my head occasionally. I want to eat some of whatever that is to help so-and-so feel validated that they brought this food. <laughs> yep. 
And then I, I remember the fact that nobody's forcing me to do that. Right. And, uh, you know, you might hear people, especially around the holidays, say something like, I just can't stay away from, or I just can't right. not eat, or I just, you know, I have no self-control around this mm-hmm. food. Right. And then you have to remind yourself that nobody's forcing that stuff in your mouth. Yeah. You're mm-hmm. still responsible for <laughs> your fork or your spoon mm-hmm. going into your mouth. Exactly. And, and you are in control of that. Um, yeah response of your body right and so i i'm glad you put that on there i'm glad that we're talking about it because nobody's going to likely nobody's going to force feed you at at thanksgiving and go you're shoving this in whether you like it or not Mm -hmm. um nobody's going to get that and so it's it's a good reminder for us even for me as sometimes you you know i might struggle with my own discipline Mm -hmm. around the dinner table and i'm like nobody's making me do this Mm-hmm. I'm not being held at gunpoint going, no. right. you're going to shove this in or else right. uh, I've got control of that. I just got to figure that out on my own. Right. And you might struggle with this too. One thing that makes me think of is uh, growing up, we used to have to go to a few different Thanksgivings mm-hmm. on the same day, you know, and it's like you feel obligated to eat at every <laughs> single one. Oh, and next thing you know, you've had, yeah, three servings of, of chocolate pie, because, <laughs> right? you know, and I'm sure with going through the church and all these other things, Thanksgiving sometimes can get stretched out where you've had the same, yep. the same type of food in front of you a lot. So yeah. I, this is coming in my very near future. We're going to have a meal Sunday. Mm-hmm. Then we're going to have Thanksgiving in a couple of weeks, not here at the church, but then just right. generally have Thanksgiving. Then December, the fir- first Sunday in December, we'll mm-hmm. have a Christmas dinner right. for the uh, church. And see. so like right here yep. in the <laughs> next three to four weeks, you know, or sooner than that mm-hmm. by the time this airs, it's going to be, I'm going to be right in the middle of it yeah, and, right. uh, having to deal with, um, having to deal with that. And so it comes every year so I can prepare for it. Mm-hmm. That's the whole point of this is right. kind of get ready mentally, exactly. get ready, uh, physically. You can bring your own foods. You can kind of help make the menu if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and we do have some people that bring healthy options. Uh, right. I'm grateful for that. We have mm-hmm. some people in the church that bring healthy things. Um, there's typically going to be something healthy on our table, uh, as an option and a few unhealthy things, but of course, um, then I get to control how much of it I consume. That's right. right. That's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. I think the rule is always the same moderation, right? Yeah. Everything in moderation. Yeah. yeah and, the, and one of the biggest things I wanted to get across is there's no room for stress in this. Like mm. don't, don't go to your family gathering stressed out because in the long run, in the, in the long scheme of thing, grand scheme of things, this one meal isn't going to ruin anything. It, right. It's what you let this one meal do to the rest of your week. If you let, if you say, okay, I'm having Thanksgiving on Thursday, I'm going to eat like crap. And then Friday, you know, <clears throat> I ate really bad yesterday, so I'm going to, let's go get some pizza or let's go do this. And, yeah, you snowball know, effect. and then it just snowballs into, yeah. okay, you're here Monday and you've binged for four days straight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so it's, don't go into this one family gathering or two or three even like it's going to ruin anything. Yeah. Especially, I mean, if, if you put in the work, if you built muscle, you built up your metabolism, you're going to be just fine. Yeah. You know, there you go. Um, and most of the people that we, um, that have a, an ear to our podcast or eyes and ears, um, are not going to be competing in some kind of, uh, body probably not you know composition well shout out to the fighters that are having to cut weight during the holiday there you go yeah, that's just terrible yeah, timing feel yeah. sorry for them yeah don't schedule a fight during the holidays how about that <laughs> yeah um, not no a good time. uh shout out to them yeah good for them and good luck to them good luck for sure because yeah. it's a it's one of the hardest times to do that right um even thinking about that as you're going shopping for mm-hmm. groceries during this time of the year they man oh yeah marketing strategists have got this down to a fine art for sure because you know the the most easily accessible things are going to be those things that you probably shouldn't be shoveling right yeah monster right. loads of, of into your mouth kelly right. would make fun of me because we would go we would when i was cutting weight we'd start to go grocery shopping and i would want to go down the bread aisle just to smell it like, <laughs> let me just I want to smell that yeast. I can smell the I can smell the carbs. Yeah. You know? Oh, it smells so good. Can you smell? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Man, I have a story about that. I'll tell you guys later. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's probably not. Uh, it's not safe. Um, 
I'll tell you now. Um, yes. So here's here's the thing. There was a person in my family, um, prob- grossly obese. Mm-hmm. And you said that, and they used to drive, they used to make their um, person that drove them around drive past their favorite restaurant just so they could roll down the window and bring just, it in. Just bring it in. Yeah. Wow. And I was like, oh, man. Um, and they would, you know, fist fight over peanut patties yeah. and, you know. At what point does it become well, a mental game, right? <laughs> yeah. It's a mental health thing, too. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. When it, oh, yeah. When yeah. it gets For to that sure. point. Yeah. Absolutely. And so um, I'm, I'm not, you know, poking fun, or but you reminded me that that mm-hmm. is part of uh, family history. And so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, people think that sugar sugar is a drug it's it's an addictive thing absolutely it, it'll make you those cravings are real mm-hmm. you know yeah, yeah. Sure. i've been they're, there they're mental and they're biological yeah yeah, yeah 100%. It's, it's it's not just a, it, it's not just the fact that you're weak and and you know you have no self control there is a physiological oh man response happening to that yeah addiction. so if you're if you're dealing with that and I, I please don't misunderstand me i'm i'm reaching out and saying you know let's get you some help yeah, and right. uh, and go through the right channels of help because exactly. there are some things that are going on that you can probably um, navigate with the help of a medical professional yeah. or a fitness tra- uh, professional. Right. right. Um, and so, uh, if that's where you're at, then you know we reach out to you and say let's let's get the help. Yeah, sure. let's fix it. Yeah, let's fix it. Um, so healthy hacks for the holidays. Um, this is a question that has come across my desk before. Should um, people in the church or Christians even celebrate holidays. Yeah. That's a, that's a question that's like come that. up. And so what yeah. would you guys say to that? Cause there is an answer. I just want to see what you have to say right off the cuff. From, I mean, my, from yeah, my point ahead. of view, being thankful, you having a time like Thanksgiving, that's the, that's a pure holiday in my opinion. Yeah. You're literally doing nothing, but sp- supposed to be, you know, going over what you're thankful for. Yeah. And I think that's beautiful. Yeah. You know, I don't, I don't, the religious part of it aside and i if any time that you're actually taking time out of your day to sit there and be thankful for what you have and what's provided to you yeah uh, go for it that can't be wrong for sure yeah practicing gratitude um will change your life yeah yeah it's a healthy habit all in and all of itself absolutely uh gratefulness and gratitude is a big deal um so clearly um scripture does not mandate us to celebrate holidays there are certain holidays mentioned in Scripture, like Jewish feast days and mm-hmm. Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Those are, you know, typically like holidays in their own mind, in their own right. right. Um, but it's so it does not say that we have to celebrate them, but it does not explicitly condemn us celebrating them either. Right. Now, most holidays, if you get into their origin. Um, that may not even have anything to do with scripture. No. Um, yeah. And so we can talk about that closer to Christmas probably. Mm-hmm. Um, good idea. But um, the, uh, the things that we do on those holidays are what make the holidays for us. And so yeah. if we, if we do it responsibly and, and do it with the right mental attitude, I think that it's perfectly fine for us to celebrate holidays. Now, the one that I would put a caveat on um, is Halloween. Yeah. Um, because it's a little more difficult to put a, right. a biblical association and belief into that. Right. Um, and so we could do that maybe next year around ha- Halloween. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, again, you know, there's a, the, uh, satirical site that I follow said around how ha- Halloween, they put out something that said, Jesus knows that your uh, trunk or treat is just a <laughs> glorified version of Halloween. Um, and so <laughs> it, that, that was the thing that they posted in Babylon B. Yeah. And I, yeah. I laughed at that, but, um, yeah. it's, a uh, it's kind of one of those things. Uh, do the holidays in any way prov- promote a false doctrine? Mm. If you want to, if you want to go that route, then you can decide whether or not you should celebrate that particular right. holiday. Right. Um, is it, does it promote a particular superstition or something that goes against scripture? That is another filter that you can use if you want to talk mm-hmm. about uh, celebrating those. Is it about superstition or immorality? Then you can kind of justify or not justify celebrating or not celebrating. Right. Um, and so we just want to be, especially around Thanksgiving, thankful to God for what he's given us. And, um, so Absolutely. we're actually going through a sermon series right now called thanks. And, uh, nice. so that's what we're doing. And, uh, we're taking, it may not be exactly what you think, mm-hmm. but it's a taking biblical perspective on mm-hmm. thanks and how we should do that. So I'm excited yeah. about Thanksgiving nonetheless. 
Yeah. I, I like holidays. I like celebrating holidays. But, you know, it's become so uh, it's so much about money. And, like, the corporate machine has really uh, yeah. washed out holidays. For sure. Yeah. You know, you look at Valentine's Day. is always my favorite example. It's <laughs> Hallmark just, invented that. Yeah, yeah, it's just this made-up thing to go get yeah. your money. And, uh, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of the holidays have, have actually become more and more that yeah, than anything else. Yeah, yeah. And so the the last thing I'll say about this is um, certain people may have very strong convictions about whether they should or should not participate in a certain holiday. Mm-hmm. Um, be patient and hear them out, you know, sure. Yeah. make sure and, and hear their side of it. You can express your own side of it and it's OK for you to agree to disagree because this is one of those things that is is not it's not commanded to do in Scripture, but mm-hmm. it's not. um take we can't be it, it is not explicitly taken away from us in scripture either right, right. so just hear each other out that's kind of a lost art just agreeing to disagree yeah have a need to knee face-to-face conversation and work it out yeah yeah but also realize sometimes you can't work it out and you just let each other do what they want to do yep. sure just, sure you know. none of that yeah Joe says none of that. No, I said there's none of that oh. going around. <laughs> I thought he was going to be like, nope, <laughs> not having that's it. That's my way or the highway. That's right. That's right. <laughs> Your family gathering is going to be a lot of fun, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to you. Oh, man. Yeah. All Political right. conversations are always fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially yeah. when alcohol starts to get involved. Oh, man. Yeah. Our holidays are fun. Yeah. In our house. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. Can well, I come? Enjoy hosting then. Yeah. Yeah. Enjoy hosting. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I've decided to change the time. You, you guys convinced me. 7.30. <laughs> okay, yeah. good. Which, you know, there's always a Southern goodbyes, you oh, know, yeah. where it's just like, all right, yeah, we're going to get out of here. Somebody and grabs their keys. 30 45 minutes later. <laughs> minutes later, we're still saying goodbye and love yous. And Why whatnot. is it like that? It's so bad. I'm, I've actually started incorporating the Irish goodbye. Okay, just walking out. You just leave. Just leave. Yeah. <laughs> I love leave. that so much. And Goodbyes it, are always so awkward. You know, if someone sees you leave, he's like, all right, love you. I got to go. Bye. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yep. I like it. Or have a dedicated uh, plan to say, at this time, our family's going to do this. Right, We're going right. to go for a walk. And nobody else is going to come with you. <laughs> Having a good exam- like a good excuse to leave is important, too. Yeah. And Kelly and I, we have codes. Like we can tell, like there's a little look that we give each other when you're ready to go. We're ready to go. Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, I got, man, my dog. It, it's time to feed Ralph. We got to go or whatever, you know. It's my just, house is on fire, guys. Yeah. got to go. <laughs> Actually, that would not go well with my family. Yeah, yeah that's right. a little. Wow. Too soon. Too soon. Too, soon. Oh, too early. soon. Yeah. Sorry, Dad. Oh, Mom and Dad. I'm sorry. Sorry. <laughs> How are they now, anyway? They're good. Their house is, uh, they're, we won't be in it uh, for Thanksgiving, but we will for sure be in it in Christmas. Good and deal. so it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Thank there you go. guys for asking. They're doing well. Yeah. Well, All right. let's just give this uh, podcast Irish goodbye. Thanks for listening to the Progressive Overload Podcast. We're honored to be a small part of your day. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or are interested in sponsoring our efforts, please feel free to reach out via email. Find us at progressiveoverloadpod at gmail.com. Don't forget to subscribe and follow our podcast so you'll be notified when our next episode drops. And as always, you can help us reach the masses by sharing our podcast with your friends and family. And then check us out on Facebook and Instagram to follow our own personal journeys and get an inside look on our day-to-day lives.